In this video, we are going to focus on the contribution of sex towards the evolution. So in this picture, you can see the Irish elk and the king of Saxony. Uh, in Irish elk, uh, the left side, you can see the female elk and the right side, you can see the male elk. Irish elk is a, a extinct species. So mainly uh, cause for the extinction is focused on the antler size. So compared to their uh, overall body size, their antler size is really large. So this antler size restricted their daily activities like finding food or just walking through the jungle. So by other means, this is a maladaptation. So the king of Saxony bird also has similar features like uh, Irish elk. Uh, the adult king of, king of Saxony bird is around 22 centimeters long. But the male has a remar remarkably long black bill, which is up to 50 centimeters long. So just like Irish elk, this is this um, black, long, really long black bill, also a maladaptation, which restrict the bird's movements. So the big question is, why do males go to all this trouble? We could say it is to get the attention of the females, but it also get the attention of the predators. So clearly this is a maladaptation. So then how could we say that it, it drives the evolution? So the differences we saw in earlier pictures between a male and a female are called sexual dysmorphic traits. It could be the color of the, the animal or the, how they sing or their body type or any changes that that we could clearly see between a male and a female. And clearly there's a sexually dysmorphic traits in males violate evolutionary theory. And these traits waste their energy and they reduce their survival skills. So again, the question is why? The solutions. So in the previous section, we talked about sexual dimorphism, but there are a few questions to be posed. One, what causes sexual dimorphism in species? Two, why do sexual dimorphism traits seem to hinder survival rather than enhance it? And three, how does sexual dimorphism fit into natural selection and to a greater effect, evolutionary theory? Darwin made a few observations concerning sexual dimorphism. First, he noticed that the males are usually the ones who exhibit the extra features within a species, and that though the traits may not help you survive better, they do make you more likely to produce. He called this unique form of natural selection, sexual selection. Sexual selection is selection that increases the chances of getting a mate. In simpler terms, if the trait increases the chances of a male getting laid more than that trait increases the chances of him getting killed, the trait will persist and evolve. There are two types of sexual selection found commonly in nature, competition and mate choice. In nature, competition is most commonly found among males fighting over a female. By winning a fight, a male drives away the other males. Natural selection promotes traits that help males win these competitions. Examples would include offensive weapons and large body sizes. A perfect example of competition is among the elephant seals, who fight other males in the population to defend their harem of females. Usually, the alpha male is always the largest and the strongest, and the one who is victorious. In some species, females mate with many males over a short period of time. In order to ensure that certain males secure their paternity to an offspring, selection has helped develop characteristics in males that prevent other males from successfully mating with that same female. Examples include the damselfly penis scoop that removes sperm from previous males before inseminating the female themselves. Rather than males fighting each other directly to garner female mates, they compete indirectly with each other by displaying themselves. In this case, the females are taking the active position in sexual selection. 
They pick the males who they deem the most appealing. Examples of features that females considered across species include bright colors, ornaments, bowers, and mating displays. The typical example of mate choice is the peacock. The peacock attracts the peafowl by creating displays of elaborate plumage alongside other males for comparison at places called le leks. Obviously, the more the feathers and the longer the feathers, the more likely they are to attract more mates. Something to note, though, is that there's a certain point where length is no longer beneficial for mating and becomes detrimental for the peacock's survival. Why sex? To be able to reproduce, the form of reproduction has been around for over a billion years ago. What is sexual selection? Charles Darwin first suggested sexual selection. He first mentions how an organism has the ability to obtain or copulate what it made because organisms have traits which will provide individuals with advantages in gaining access to mates. Animals need to compete with others of the same species for a chance to mate. Sexual selection and natural selection why are they different? Male weapons like horns are used both to attract mate and more of predators. Male ornamentation tells us that natural selection and sexual selection are different. Why females choose? Eggs are often expensive while sperm is cheap. More energy is invested per egg than in sperm. Females limited by egg production while males limited by number of mates. This demonstrates how males have little to lose by mating because they can easily mate again. Females are different because of their higher investment in eggs, and for this, they are really picky. Why can't we all just be asexual? Sex is always costly. Throwing half of your genes away on each offspring costs the producing males. Sex only wins out when it doubles the number of offspring being produced. Asexual are always 100% of genes being passed on, while sexual are 50% of genes being passed on. Darwin mentions how a sexual gene produces twice as many copies as the original sexual gene, while some males do not produce at all. Evolutionary difference. Males and females is a matter of differential investment. Males mating is cheap while females are expensive. Males mating costs a small dose of sperm. Female costs much more. Producing of large are often a huge expenditure of energy and time. Males only invest in offspring and his sperm, while females provide all the parental care. Sexual selection tends to act more heavily on males, dictated by female choice. Females must make each opportunity count by choosing the best possible father to fertilize their limited number of eggs. Sexual selection arises though variance in mating success. Even though the males don't really compete for females, they still have really bright colors and ornaments that attract the opposite sex. So according to the observations done by the scientists, although the 90% of all the bird species are socially mon monogamous, in full three quarters of these species, males and females mate with individuals more than their social partner. Usually the male were considered the promiscuous sex and the female are the picky sex, but sometimes it turns the other way around. And when these behaviors switch between the sexes, so does the direction of the dysmorphism. Some examples for this are seahorses and pipefish. So their reverse decoration is exactly what one would expect if the evolutionary explanation of sexual dysmorphism is true, but doesn't make sense if the species was specially created. Okay, so what is sexual selection? Sexual selection is basically natural selection arising through the preference of one sex for certain characteristics in individuals of the other sex. So that's why I put choosy females, because 
males essentially are going to have to evolve certain traits to have better reproductive success with mating with the female. So what exactly are females looking for when they pick a male? Um, Darwin explains that the females were choosing simply on the basis of aesthetics, which means that they would choose the males who had the best traits that the females would pass on to their offspring. These traits will inevitably increase the fitness of her offspring, and they would be able to pass those traits on through the next generations. So, what exactly does this tell us about se sexual selection? Preferring certain types of males helps the females spread their genes. The choosing of a male is important because uh, if they were to choose between a male with pretty bad genes and a male with good genes, and they choose a male with bad genes, those bad genes will get passed on to the offspring, and then th these genes will eventually get lost due to selection. Next slide. Okay, the good gene model. So testing the good gene model, Coyne used the example of the gray tree frogs. So by using the gray tree frogs, they were testing to see which males had really, you know, which males had the really good genes. So what they did, they grabbed female eggs and fertilized them with the sperm of a frog with longer calls, which signified a, a healthy male, and the sperm of a frog with short calls. So what ended up happening was that the, the offspring that had the sperm from the longer called frogs, they grew faster and they were able to survive better, and they were even larger after met metamorphosis. So this good gene test showed that the longer calls were a sign of competent males with good genes and that the females they reproduce with, uh, they will have the offspring that will carry these genes as well. So they will get passed on through later generations. So another explanation for sexual dimorphisms would be based off of this sensory bias model. These models assume that the evolution of sexual dimorphisms is driven by these pre-existing biases in the female nervous system. So there's a chance that a male without good genes could develop some sort of phenotype that would correlate with a good gene that females already have this bias towards. And because the males, like, for example, the birds with like the red crest on their chest, even if a male doesn't have the good, like, let's, let's say, genotype, but he does have this phenotypic trait, this red crest on his chest, he will have better reproductive success than all the other males, just because of this red crest. These pre-existing preferences are created by natural selection so that these uh, species would have the best possible chance at surviving and reproducing.